Standing here with the one and only Tom Crutchfield, a legend in reptile keeping. And we got some amazing animals here. This animal, tell us about it. $10,000. Why is it $10,000? Okay, that's a red albino iguana. In other words, the red is a, um, a morph of iguana that occurs in the wild that's very red in color. And this is what an albino one looks like. Mm -hmm. Here's a normal albino iguana, just to put it in perspective. So it's just a much nicer looking one. And we were the first people to produce these. There's not many around. And it's, it, right now it's ten thousand for this one. You know, you it, it's cheap at half the price. Th this is this is a world's first. You need to give this a special name. I know this is the Crutchfield. Okay, we call albino. it uh, Crutchfield Crimson. Is what we Crutch call it. Crutchfield Crimson. I like that. Yes. Now, how many animals like this do you have in your possession? Is, is this like a rarity, like a couple of them, two, three, is it 10, 20? You mean exactly like that? Yeah, or, like this. Well, at red ones we probably have twenty or thirty, but at, they're but, rare. But we probably have two. Yeah, extremely rare. But we probably have two or three thousand iguanas all total, but not like that. And, and the secret to keeping them, I believe, your secret is that you keep them outside in we South do. Florida. Yes, it's and they much, love it out there. They do. We do have to uh, offer alternate heat sources in the very coldest nights. If it were to, once in a while, we get down in the thirties for a short time. But we have heated boxes. We can lock them in. But otherwise, we're out. Do you around. really need those though, because these iguanas live in the wild where you live. I would not need the heat boxes if the animals were in the wild, because they could dig down in a burrow under stuff. Oh, but okay. we don't allow them to do that in the cage because they could escape, and we don't want to allow them to I do see. that. So that's why they need the heat source. Right. Now, every year you seem to be producing new and better iguanas, mixing crimsons with albinos. What's the next big thing in, in these iguanas? Huh. Probably, I probably you have uh, something over there that's Well, the next, the biggest thing that we have right now is this year for the first time we popped out six translucent, trans negative albino iguanas. I did not on purpose, it just was a hidden gene. So it's a hidden gene that does right. what to the, al to the well, iguana? They, they, they call these things translucents because you can almost see through them, they have clear nails. And it's not that they look so good, which they do. They look mm. fantastic. But it's when you incorporate that gene into other things. I see. When you mix it. Exactly. That makes it even better. Do you think these uh, iguanas are going to start having genes like comparable to what's going on in, like, uh, say, geckos? They already do, mate. That many genes? No. But they're working on it. Now, are you going to be at the forefront of this? Uh, well, I, I guess I am, only because I'm the first person to do it, certainly the biggest. Mm -hmm. But I really was just trying to produce the big albinos in number. The translucents were an accident. The red ones were on purpose. We well, did this that. This is how so it started on. with the, with the uh, Burmese pythons exactly. and the ball pythons. It started with the well, albino. I had to do with the ball pythons, but the I, albino I Burmese. I know too, you did. So, yeah. I know you. That's why I'm For saying sure. you're like, a, like a, 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 I guess you could say a pioneer in this industry. Right. A legend in my own mind, for sure. <laughs> in a few other people's minds, too, maybe. <laughs> now, seriously, though. The albino is kind of a dead end in a sense, yeah, yeah. because you can only breed so much into it, and no, then you, there's nothing else you can right. do with it. What What is the next big gene in, in the iguana? Well, I, I really think the red, red red gene, because it's a codon, makes it easy to work with. Right. Uh, one other thing that other people are working toward that I stopped because they're interesting, but not interesting enough for me to continue it, is what we were, we were, we're going to call it the blizzard lizard, and that would be an albino a xanthic iguana. In other words, a blue iguana. Are there is axanthics out there? There are a lot of axanthics. They're solid blue. I had them. Remember, I used to breed the blue iguanas. Oh, that, I oh that, the blue is. A, is but a, if is, I were okay. to take the blue one and breed it to an albino, every single baby would be normal, but double head. And when you bet them back together, like one in sixteen, I think, would be an albino. Yeah, would be a snow white. Because if you take away the melanin from the blue, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have the yellow in there, because yellow should, and blue it should be white. It should be white. Well, no, it will be because it's been done before, but it's dead now. How, how many years off are we from that? Well, with me, I'm not going to do it at all, but with other people, probably two years. Why wouldn't you do it? Because I like the red ones better. Okay, so you're into the reds. Yeah, well, it's the best morph there is. Now, this, this, alone, this animal alone, to me, is perfect. Yeah. It doesn't need to, anything added no. to it. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you were going to buy a pair of, you know, of iguanas, I mean, I would be happy with this color. I, I mean, we're almost taking it for granted because now we want to do the next best right. thing. But sometimes you, too many ingredients spoils the, uh, the pot. Right. Yeah, just for me, to be honest with you, just a green iguana is pretty nice, really. But I mean, when you get an albino, they're really, really nice. And the good thing about buying albino iguanas, too, is that regular green iguanas are becoming feral throughout the world. And while it's not a problem in Miami because we don't have anything native, 
They're in Fiji now with Fiji Island iguanas and competing with them. And of course, they're already critically endangered. And now they're trying to kill off the green iguanas. So what I want to do is, is double, it's a double thing actually. Of course, I want to breed lots of these for sale for the market, but I'd like over time for these to get cheap enough to take the place of the green ones. Mm. Because if these escape and you turn them loose, guess what? They won't live. Oh, because true. they're albino. You're Something's right. going to eat them because they stand out. Right. They have no hidden protection or cryptic coloration. So not only are we have, being able to have a pet lizard, and these make better pets even than the albinos because they, they're so tame, but you're helping the planet too. Can we, can we uh, if we bought a pair of these, like say today, mm -hmm. when can I get these things to breed? How long would it take? Well, uh, this one next year. This one. That quickly? Yeah, this one two years. How old is this? That's, uh, this one right here is 2015. You can breed a male at two years, a female takes three years. But so this that's not bad, because no, a lot of people think no. that they have to be like 10 years old. No, not at all. No, wow. no. Well, and, and, they, and, and my record clutch size is 74 eggs with 70 hatchlings. 74 eggs on one lizard? Average is about 60. Hey, I, I'm getting into all these new projects. Uh, I, I, I got to get, get tortoises, now I got albino iguanas. I got a new friend here. He might be coming home with me, you never know. Tommy, always good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. Good, a legend in reptile keeping, Tom Crutchfield. And